Uh, I thought we could definitely get in the playoffs. And uh, people might say that's a bit negative, but I'm a bit of a realist. I think uh, when you look at the, the, the clubs that's in the division and the finances that they have, last year, you know, we were still putting our own house in order. We were gradually getting better off the field, generating more income. And I thought we had a better squad. Um, probably not in numbers, but in quality. So I was quite optimistic last year, and I thought that uh, you know, definitely looking to uh, to concrete a place in the playoffs, and uh, and then obviously you never know. Summer additions: Andy Liddle and former crowd favourite John Harley, who came to Bramall Lane with his fellow Fulham teammate Barry Hales, were joined by a brace of players from across the city, in the shape of tenacious midfielder and Republic of Ireland regular Alan Quinn, and the long throw specialist and central defender Lee Bromby. As the new Coca-Cola Championship fizzed into action, the Blades took on Burnley at Turf Moor. Never a welcoming place for visiting teams, but would this be the first step to the Premiership for players and supporters alike? Only time would tell. So the 2004-2005 season is underway. Sheffield United in their change colours for this opening fixture. Bright, warm, sunny day in this part of Lancashire. Both teams starting this season full of hopes for the forthcoming nine months or so. Bromby to hurl it in. Bromby again. Here's Gray. Good chance, and that's a well-taken goal, although it won't count. It's been disallowed. Chaplin. It's a good cross, Gray clears, oh it's gone in. Mika Hyde didn't know too much about it, but he has put Burnley in front. Bromby with the throw. It'll have to be retaken. There was obstruction on this near side. Bromby will take it again. Chapo again stands in front of him. Morgan's header and touched in. Gray has got it and it's an equaliser for Sheffield United. Morgan's firm header and just guided past coin by Gray to make it 1 1. It's the first home match of the season for Sheffield United. And after their point against Burnley, they'll be hoping for all three from this fixture. Stoke in the change colours of Gray towards Noel Williams. Oh, there was a kick there. And Gifton Noel Williams is going to be in trouble with the referee, and it's a red card for the Stoke man. Chris Morgan was kicked in the head by the Stoke player. There's the challenge. Now watch on the left side of your screen. Wendell with the throw. Ashley Ward! What a good save from Ed De Hoy. Sunny day at Bramall Lane, reading the visitors today. Running just clear. This is Tung. Whistle's gone already, it won't count. Goes as far as Harper. Oh, what a shot that was from James Harper. United come to Deepdale looking for their first win in almost 50 years at Preston North End. And I 
United once more in their change colours. An early touch for Wright. United looking to put behind them that uh, home defeat to Reading in their last fixture. Throws have proved very productive for the Blades so far this season. Just only half clear. Behind by O'Neill. Just four minutes played, and Sheffield United get the first corner of the match. Take it. Bromby. That's great. An early goal for Sheffield United, and Andy Gray has got it. Pressing forward. Oh, it's gone in. And the last touch came off John Harley, an own goal. Only cleared as far as Montgomery. Haven't got too much in the way of support, the Sheffield United player. Still Montgomery. He's done well. Towards Ward and in. Chris Morgan makes it 1-1. But the goal owed so much to Montgomery's persistence on the far side. Extra time. This is Quinn. Oh, it's gone in off the back of Neil Cutler. Well, is that a Quinn goal or an own goal by the goalkeeper? Sheffield United won't really care too much. The shot cannoning off the post and hitting the back of Cutler. Tom looks as though he's going to strike this free kick. It's 3 1. Game over, surely. Sheffield United into the next round of the Carling Cup. Surely no way back now for League One side Stockport. This is Leicester and it's 4-1. Horrible games first first round of the Cups. I remember beating York a couple of years ago. I said to the lads that, you know, at the end of the game, uh, before extra time, you know, it's all about getting through now and just to keep playing. And you know, I thought we deserved it in the end, but you know, it's hard work. You only got to look at the, the results in the in the in the in the competition, and the, there's that many of our clubs gone out, and it, it's always the same, really. You, you you really can't win. But it's nice to there's some good pluses. Some people had 90 minutes for the first time for for a while, and nice to see Jack coming back on. You know, although we only wanted to give him half an hour, really. Uh, so so that's gone a little bit out of plan tonight. We didn't really want to keep him on that length of time, but that's that's life, really. A keenly awaited Yorkshire derby following Leeds United's relegation from the Premiership. Three changes to the Blades lineup. Alan Wright returns in defence. Michael Tung and Andy Gray start in midfield. Tung having come on as a substitute against Stockport and having scored with a very good free kick. There's a terrific atmosphere at Bramall Lane. Much, much more than three points is at stake. The pride of Yorkshire is at stake as well. Gray looking to get in and just tipped away by Sullivan. And Sullivan makes the catch as well. Gray. And again, Sullivan's behind it. 
Richardson. Shrugs off one challenge, gets his shot in, and it's a good save. Richardson. Just dispossessed. Tongue. It's a good surging forward run. Ashley Ward is clear. Can he score? Yes, he can. Sheffield United in front, five minutes into the second half. Blades looking to build on the lead given to them by Ashley Ward. Towards Morgan, and well tipped over. Harley to strike, Harley to score. Two goals in 14 minutes for Sheffield United, and they lead Leeds by two goals to nil. Obviously, we're looking forward to that game. Um, it brought Kevin, my assistant, obviously Kevin Blackwood was in charge now, it brought him back to the ground. So it was a little bit more spicy, and uh, we hadn't won at home. Uh, and I think Ashley Ward it was who, who, who started us off. Uh, and in the end, we were, weren't quite comfortable that day. Goes here to Quinn. Just cleared away. Bromby. Harley will just keep the ball in and turned into the net by Gray. A well-worked goal by Sheffield United. Bromby's cross met by Harley and Gray makes it 1-0. Cook. We'll take on Bromby, his shot's got a deflection and off the bar. After a 10-day rest for the squad at the start of September, United fans watched nervously as the Blades took on promotion favourites West Ham, with the prospect of facing Leicester, Wigan and Sunderland still to come. Bromby to hurl it in. Good confident catch from Bywater, who releases quickly. progress. Marlon Harewood. Oh, what a goal from Marlon Harewood. Just nine minutes played and West Ham take the lead. Marlon Thurwell. It's Alan Quinn. And it's in. It's his first goal for Sheffield United. And what a free kick from Quinn. Floated in past everyone. Five minutes left. Teddy Sheringham lining up this free kick. It's got a deflection and West Ham are back in front. Scowcroft and he's turned the ball into the net and for the second successive match Sheffield United have conceded an early goal Davizas has that crossed the line? yes it has Leicester lead 2-0 it may very well though have come off John Harley Davizas with the header it strikes the bar and then comes off the Sheffield United man Scowcroft. It's 3 0. Jason Wilcox. It's 
Go cross ball in. Jagielka inadvertently plays it straight into the path of Wilcox. Bromby's throw. Chris Morgan. 3 1. Is there time for a comeback from United? Sheffield United pressing hard, trying to find a second goal. This is Leicester. Ward tries to get there, Quinn. And they do get another one. Jonathan Forte with his first goal for Sheffield United. Good pressure from Leicester, from Ward and from Quinn. And Forte can celebrate a goal that he will always remember. Morgan, and it's beyond Kenny. Wrexham lead. Gray gets a deflection, it's 1 1. <laughs> Last moments of the first half. Sheffield United hit a very poor corner. And Wrexham looked to break. Llewellyn is making a great surge through the middle. Here is Llewellyn, one against one. And it's 2-1, Wrexham back in front. Jackie Elka, into the top corner. Sheffield United equalised for a second time. Oh, it was a real mix-up there between Baker and Carey. This is Quinn. Must score. That's handball. Doesn't matter. Andy Gray makes it 3-2. George Morgan. And just off the bar. Coventry scramble it to safety. Good chance for Sheffield United. Stern jump. down this near side Kenny will just get there to punch it away this is Morel and it's 1-0 to the visitors time shoots off one challenge Tommy Black scores on his home debut Tongue with the cross and Black with the powerful header. Jagielka with the final touch and just pushed to safety by Poon. Well. That's not a very good header at all, and it's the lead for Sheffield United. Paul Shaw with the goal. Poor header from Whitley. With the Blades' unbeaten away record shattered at Leicester and a crashing defeat away to Wigan, 
The only high points of September were the continuation of the Carling Cup run at Wrexham's racecourse ground and a plucky performance against Sunderland, which left the Blades down in 11th place in the championship. Things must get better for Warnock's boys as we enter into October, and first up is a trip to the south coast at Brighton. Couldn't get there. It's towards Darren Curry. Good chance for a shot, and he's taken it well. A nice ball to Shaw, 1-1. One, one. Paul Shaw scores for the second successive match. Three points today would prove to be a turning point and would signal a charge up the table. Gillingham. Got Sheffield United round for Sunday lunch. Lee Bromby is the long throw expert. And Morgan has flicked it on, and Paul Shaw has fired it in. And Sheffield United have an early lead, and it just had to be him, didn't it, against his former club. Oh, he's slipped it in, and it's Messi from Gillingham, and Paul Shaw has gone and scored again on his return to Gillingham. There's no stopping him at the moment. Four goals in his last three games. It is a sure thing for Sheffield United. Well, I was talking about that incisiveness and Liddell's driving run. Where's Noseworthy? He's got to come over to block the cross. He's just sat back, cross has come in, poor clearance there. And he's just, just there to knock it in, Paul Shaw with his left foot. Good finish again, but that's incisiveness, isn't it, from Liddell? Now, we haven't had enough of that from Gillingham. It opens up for Liddell. And here is Michael Tong. Fine finish. And it's becoming a stroll now for Sheffield United as Tong makes it 3-0. Great move. finish. Great finish from Michael Tong, but what a great goal. They're defending their own set piece at the corner. Paddy Kenny punches it out. And as you see it here, look, Paddy Kenny punches it out. It's a great ball. That's a great ball by Paul Shaw. Little drives again down this right-hand side. Cuts inside, commits players. Gillingham haven't done that in the game. Nice run across the defender to take two away by Shaw. And then Tonk with a great finish on the near post. Lovely strike. And it's a real, a very, very good goal from Sheffield United. Excellent stuff. From one end to the other, just like that. And Michael Tong scores his first championship goal of the season. Send this free kick in. Nowland. Oh! And it's an OG. Agonising for Lee Bromby. And Gillingham have a goal back. Well, a short little free kick, and I thought the goalkeeper's got to claim this, Paddy Kenny, but there he goes, Bromby, trying to get in front of his before he did his marking, and he just well, he just flicks it into his own net. I think he takes his eye off the ball, thinking that Kenny's going to come out and clatter him, because really he's got to head that back from the way it came. Getting him undone by one of their former players, Paul Shaw, scored twice on his return to the Priestfield Stadium in what turned out to be a comfortable victory for the Blades, even though they had to see it out with ten men. Testing times for Gillingham, though. It ends Gillingham 1, Sheffield United 3. Johnson. This is Marlon King. And off the post. Real chance for Nottingham Forest. Andy Little is lining up this free kick for Sheffield United. What a crowd of players to try and get this ball past, though. It's Little. Oh, it's in! Underneath the wall, which jumped over the ball. Quinn. 
Picked up by Shaw. Well, something has happened off the ball and the referee has stopped play. And Alan Quinn could be in trouble here. The referee is reaching for his back pocket. And it's a red card. Sheffield United down to ten men. Time running out for Nottingham Forest if they're to find a way back into this game. They're not pressing hard though. Comes off Kenny and that's an easy goal for David Johnson. Sheffield United make the breakthrough with 12 minutes left. It's come off the defender, it's a corner kick to Sheffield United. Little with it. Great! 2-0. kick and the goalkeeper just takes it away from him that drama a penalty shootout to decide who goes through to the next round this is great and scores and Peter Kenny to take a penalty for Sheffield United it's against the post Turn around and well taken indeed. This is Smith to win it for Watford and he has done. Watford are through to the next round of the Carling Cup. Well, crew are hoping to defy the odds again and stay in the championship again. Anything else would probably be considered a bonus. Sheffield United are expected to be in playoff contention at least. They've been stuck at this level for 11 seasons now and they're getting pretty fed up of it. It's John Harley. Oh, it's uh, another cracker and he scored a few of those in his time. John Harley blasts Sheffield United into an early lead. What an absolute screamer. Just look at the goalkeeper, Ben Williams. He sees this all the way, Ben Williams. He actually anticipates when Harley comes to this ball. Just watch him. He shifts to his left almost immediately, but he can do nothing about this because it's got pace, bend, direction. It's in that far corner. And just look at that. The style, the movement, and into that back of the net. Absolutely superb. Well, sure. on by Gray to Andy Little. Sheffield United in the hunt again, and Andy Gray celebrates, and it's a goal, it counts, and Gray on target yet again this season for the Blades, who are tuning up inside ten minutes. What a magnificent ball from Andy Little. I really thought he's going to have to have a touch because he's got time and he's got space, but just watch him whip this back in towards the middle. Once Andy Gray gives him it, there's no danger him having the touch. He just whips that first time. Look at that. That's just crying out for a centre forward to go and attack it. It hits the backside of Ben Williams. Look at it. It goes underneath him. Has it taken enough pressure off the ball to stop it going in the back of the net? The assistant on this far side says no, it hasn't. It's gone over the line. And we still can't tell you. Yes, we can from that angle. It definitely did. Kind of 
He had an unsuccessful and rather short spell at Leeds. Now strutting his stuff. Sheffield United yet to score for them, came close then. It's not back there. And Kanamatari has now scored for them. And Sheffield United, remarkably, are 3-0 up with 11 minutes played. Well, it is top quality stuff, I can assure you. Never mind that crew are at the bottom and they're conceding plenty of goals. The ball from Little's fantastic. The head back towards Kadamatri is absolutely superb. And then just watch him turn the neck muscles because he's got to get lift on this ball as well as height. And there it is, it's up and it's over the defender on the line. Kenny Lord, what a goal. Danny Kadamatri's first goal for Sheffield United. It's Kenny Lunt to deliver, and Foster, they've got a goal back. Stephen Foster not picked up, and there is hope yet for Crew. Fletcher is uh, going to be kept busy on that touchline because Sheffield United are ready to bring on Jonathan Ford. He's seen a bit of first-team action lately. Actually, he made his first-ever start against Crew last season. He's taking the place of Derek Geary, another owl turned blade. What about his debut tonight, Chris? Very good. He's coming to the game tonight when the team's on a high, which is always a nice time to come into a side. The performance in the first half was exceptional. Very good, and he was a part of it. This lad's also got a future, Jonathan Fort. Crew running out of time. Foster's there again, though, and it's crept in. Go down as an OG for Thurwell, perhaps, but it's probably come too late for Crew. A mixed bag for the Red and White Wizards in October. The defeat to Watford in the Carling Cup was an unusually early exit for the Cup specialists, but the steady crawl towards the playoff positions continued, with three points gained from each of the games against Gillingham, Plymouth, and Crew. All eyes were now on the championship as we move into November. It started with a horrible 5-1 defeat at Ipswich, followed by a goalless draw at home to Gillingham. United unable to repeat their heroics at Priestfield a few weeks before. The best chance coming from a long-range shot from John Harley. Sheffield United looking for revenge against Watford after Watford knocked them out on penalties in the Carling Cup a few weeks back. Half an hour played. Good passing and movement from the Blakes. This is short. What a goal! What a brilliant goal from Quinn. Absolutely magnificent. Strikes it down and the ball clearly had crossed the line. Geary. Quinn, jumping straight at the goalkeeper there. And touch on towards uh, Gunnarsson, good turn, and that's a very nice equaliser for Watford from Brynjar Gunnarsson. Geary. Little does well to keep the ball in. Geary in support. Might fall here to Quinn. Oh, it's a terrific goal from Quinn. And he's making a habit of scoring great goals for Sheffield United. What a strike. For 
Sheffield United. Gray with the touch on. That's an easy catch for Oakes. Wolves into an early lead. Little with the corner. Cross here to Bromby. 1 1. Cameron. Slides it in towards Carl Court, and Wolves are back in front. Back to the long clearance. It's a good strong run forward from Sheffield United, and they will get a corner kick. Thurwell, and it's gone in, Oakes got a hand to it, Thurwell gets his first goal for the plate. It is going to be Harley, and Oakes just got there. Bromby. Shaw takes it nicely. What a goal! What a fantastic goal from Paul Shaw. The control was everything. Look at the way he takes it. And a coolly taken volley. Special moment for Luke Beckett as he comes on for his Sheffield United debut following his move here from Stockport. <laughs> jump in the area, it might fall to Lescott and the defender has made it 3-3 with three minutes left. Never a happy place for the Blades, the curse of Portman Road brought about a heavy defeat, from which United struggled to bounce back. Things have to improve for Warnock's young squad as the nights grow longer, and we enter into the month of December. Phillips and Jagielka can't get there, with Kenny having been dismissed at half-time, Jagielka is quickly beaten. Three kick for Sheffield United. It's Andy Little and it's 1 1. Fiercely struck, and Sheffield United are back in this match. Hartley with the cross. Geary. What a goal from Geary! His first for Sheffield United. And they have come from 1-0 down to lead 2-1. Well, a minimum of four minutes stoppage time was supposed to be played at the end of the first half of this South Yorkshire derby. We've gone past that stage now. Here's Tom and Sheffield United lead. And didn't he take the goal well? You can see Tom picking up possession a long way from goal. A quick burst of acceleration. And although the goalkeeper got a touch to it, couldn't prevent the ball going in.
Great. Good save. Short. 2 0. There was no way that Paul Shaw was going to miss that one. Shaw with the initial ball forward. Great. Given the opportunity to shoot, it was a good stop, but Shaw was in exactly the right place. And Sheffield United heading for all three points. Jagielka clears. Tong. All well, the flags got up on the first side, and Tong has put it in, but it will not count. Well, that's a controversial decision by the assistant on the far side. Mark Halsey, the referee, going across for a word. Let's have another look. Well, Tom picks up the ball there, and although a teammate is clearly in an offside position, was he interfering with play? The assistant referee certainly thought so. Neil Warnock will not be impressed. Swales! Is there a way back for Rotherham? Claren with the corner. McIntosh off the bar, and it's 2-2. Cullet makes his debut for Sheffield United following his move from Brighton to Bramall Lane. Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Gillingham Town Bramall Lane for this afternoon's Cup of Cup. Full here to Gray. Oh, he's put it over. Possession once more. Harris got in behind the defence. And he's been able to turn it in as well. Tom. Just a fraction too high, hitting the bar. Just able to turn it in, Andy Little. Cross whipped in at great speed. And Little was able to get on the end of it. It's an awkward clearance, and Cardiff can't deal with it. a teasing cross and once more Cardiff will put it behind the Blades really turning up the pressure now and it's taken short Little Morgan Katamateri and it's turned in by Gray they were 1-0 down now Sheffield United lead 2-1 Morgan back across goal and Gray with the final touch. Second. 
six Coventry players waiting for Lewis Carey's delivery. Penalty given. A.D. Williams, the player that went down. Sheffield United are arguing about it. How much contact was there? Enough. It's going to be Stern John for Coventry. And it was a very poor penalty. Made the save easy for Ian Bennett. Far too close to the goalkeeper. No great power. Maybe the key to the penalty save was the fact that John and Bennett were teammates at Birmingham last season. Adebola, McSheffrey, now Stern John, yes! Within three minutes of failing with a penalty, Stern John scores his first goal for Coventry in open play. And he beats his former colleague. Very uncertain defending, Chris Morgan finds the equaliser. Goalkeeper caught out. And neither of these sides providing a defensive masterclass. Should have been met with more certainty by Labille. Sheffield United conceding from a free kick and equalising from a corner kick. Chris Morgan, the skipper, and it's 1-1 with just over half an hour played. Jagielka. Took too much time. She tried to break and now they may be a bit short at the back. Jagielka! Gray takes the acclaim. But Gary McSheffrey was in there trying to clear and may well have got the most meaningful touch of all. Sheffield United trailed in this game. But now they've turned it right around. Coventry have now lost the lead on eight occasions this season. through for Leicester he just died a little too long on uh, that ball and this is Tom what a run forward from Tom he's got Gray in support Gray 1-0 to Sheffield United December is proving to be a terrific month for Neil Warnock's side Tom setting up Gray Dublin was beaten so was the goalkeeper. Kenna Martin. Keeps his feet. Quinn wants it. Here's Quinn. What a way to end 2004. It's going to be all three points for Sheffield United. An early Christmas present for Blades fans with the first away win at the New Den in four years. The trend continued with a draw at Millmore and consecutive wins at Cardiff, Coventry and Leicester to leave the Blades in the mix for a playoff position. With three games in just seven days, the Blades faced a busy start to the new year. A visit to Bramall Lane by promotion favourites Wigan would be the first challenge. And then up, an FA Cup third round tie against Premiership Giants Aston Villa. Bullard with the corner. Oh, it's gone in. The scorer, McCulloch.
Nice ball swept to this uh, near side. Geary. Good run. It's got a touch and it's gone in off the defender, Thomas Retka. Five minutes before half time and Sheffield United score the first goal of the game. Good run from Geary and touched in by Retka. for Sheffield United. It's a free kick. Daniel is shaping to take it. across there as well and it will be Andy Little to float this ball in for Sheffield United half cleared and as far as Bromby 2-0 excellent volley from Lee Bromby such an important goal for Sheffield United brought them victory at Upton Park. One touch to control, one touch to score. The first Saturday of January means the third round of the FA Cup, always a special day. The Blades were up against Premiership opposition in Aston Villa, a lunchtime kickoff and the match shown live on the BBC. And it will be Sheffield United Jagielka, who scored against Leeds that famous night a couple of years ago when they reached the semi-finals of both domestic cup competitions. There, who will kick Sheffield United off and underway in the striped shirts. And they kick from right to left, away from the cop end in this first half towards the Villa fans at the John Street end. The last team to beat Sheffield United on this ground in an FA Cup tie, Aston Villa, in round four in 1996. Ball immediately played out wide, looking for Jagielka and Gray, the front man, will be the danger. Now this is Jagielka, suspicion of a handball. Free kick here to Sheffield United. Dangerous ball in. Very dangerous ball into the penalty area. And Lee Bromby had stayed forward. It's lovely put deep ball in this is. You can see Bromby making his way up there on the far side of the screen. I don't know if it's Gavin McCann lets him go. It's, it's just a, a yard or two, just a, a little bit late arriving. He has to slide. If he could stand, stay on his feet there, he'd have a bit more control over the ball. And right will take it. Gray is forward. Aim that wide to Harley. That's middle who leaves it. Check out. Chance. Such a good striker of the ball, but off target on that occasion. This is just the first time volley across. Lovely touch. Steps out the way, Tong. Jagielka, as you can see, the play is closing him down. He knows if he hits that straight, it's going to be blocked. I think it's by Delaney. So he has to just try and get it left side of the goal. Just pulls it, yanks it a little bit. Bromby's in the penalty area. Gray is in the six-yard box with Cullip and Jagielka. Oh, it's come to Jagielka, and that's a fine stop. Coming away from goal. He whipped his head under the ball and got the header in. Yeah, it's Jagielka. Just comes off his man. Free header there. Sorensen, well, I thought, I thought it was a goal. So close, it's an excellent save. Jagielka. Malbert. To Cole. And here's Barry. 
And half a chance for Villa, and he struck it well! And Gareth Barry gives the Premiership side the lead! And that is a real blow for the Championship side. Ray's at the near post, and behind him is Cullop. Bombi and Jagielka are in there as well, and it comes towards the net. Oh, it's in! And it's gone in off Danny Cullop! I don't think he knew anything about it! One of the most deserving players you will find anywhere in the game, Danny Cullop. And they're back in it! around the stadium it's a lovely it's a lovely set piece and like I said I'm not too sure what he knew about it it's the same old routine it's a touch it's a stop it's a deliver everybody jumps and pull up stand still he keeps his eye on the ball and just stabs it with his left foot Davis away by Ridgewell here's Jackie Elka Tom has given it away Henry's had a bustling last five minutes or so Then he got on the wrong side of Harley, but Villa have it back again. Bersan to Hendry, off Cullet. He puts his foot in again. It's scrambly stuff, this is Barry. Suspicion of a handball, not given. And the Villa bench enraged. It is Quinn. Little behind Quinn, wide to Andy Gray. The forward run here, a chance for Sheffield United! Has Andy Little knocked Aston Villa out of the FA Cup as the Premiership team looks to the assistant referee whose flag stayed down? I've got to say, my first instinct there was that was offside because I think it's Little, he's, he's making a forward run. I think the ball originally comes off a defender's head. Bruce is making the run here. Oh, the assistant referee got it absolutely right. Oh, no, it's the touch. I thought it was a touch off the defender. It's a touch off the, the uh, Sheffield United player. He's got it wrong. The cross too far for Kenny to reach. What an important time to score. Andy Little's fourth of the season. Always got goals, over 100 in his career. Was he offside as the ball came through? It looked as if he was at least a yard and a half offside. And here come Sheffield United again to put it beyond out. Little will fancy this deflected into the game! And Sheffield United have sent Aston Villa crashing out of the FA Cup. And there was absolutely no doubt about that one. is rocking now. Oh, he's delighted with it, absolutely delighted. I mean, great play from Tong again. And he's no more than to deserve. There was a big question mark over their second goal. I don't think there's any question about this one. You just see here, good aggressive play, running with the ball, too easily beaten. Then it's just seeing the little showing him exactly where he wants the ball, waits for it to come, and that is not an easy strike when that ball comes across your body. It's a lovely little layoff. Just watch this, just lets it run across his body. What about the just goalkeeper, Just controlled strike. What about it's, the goalkeeper? Well, it takes a deflection, I think, from Jay Wood Samuel. Discord in the Villa camp. Delight amongst Sheffield United followers. This will be the fifth season in a row. Knocked out in the third round. Villa. Villa, the final whistle. Villa are out. Andy Little with two goals, made sure of that. The first controversial when he was clearly offside, but with the second he made no doubts, and he has sent Neil Warnock's side through. They had the best of the first half. Thomas Sorensen kept them at bay. They went behind to Gareth Barry, shot right at the start of the second period. But Danny Cullet levelled, and Little stole the show, and Sheffield United march on in the FA Cup with another giant killing scalp. They have five wins in the last six games now for Neil Warner, who is still chasing promotion as well.
Knight. A little bit of space ahead of him. Plenty of space for Carpenter. And in stoppage time at the end of the first half, Brighton score. to his own net he sliced it past Michel Kuypers last few moments then of the match Knight with a little touch up he's got it back as well Leon Knight this to win it New Year's celebrations were dampened when the unbeaten run came to an end against Wigan, but the United fans were rewarded in a stunning game to put Aston Villa out of the FA Cup. A win at West Ham in the Championship was followed by a one-all draw at Upton Park to keep United's Cup dreams alive. As we move into February, we start with a visit by Championship leaders Ipswich. Call here to Gray. That's a good stop from Kelvin Davis. Lengthwood scramble it behind for a corner. Gucci. Strong run. Good support though. Good pass to David Unsworth. Unsworth, oh, from a tight angle, he's put it in. David Unsworth playing against Sheffield United for the very first time. Goal and Davis just able to stick out a hand. Jimmy Jilton swings it in. Got clear. Kuchi and the former Wednesday player scores against Sheffield United. Should be a tight and titanic tussle this but they will have to be separated today, one way or another. 90 minutes, 120 minutes, penalties, we will see. Sheffield United are due to be at home to Crewe on Saturday. West Ham are due to be at home to Plymouth. One of them will be going to Arsenal instead, and you can be sure it's going to be fun finding out who. It's a cracking cup tie from Bramall Lane. All the action is coming right up. Next Saturday in round five, Sheffield United and West Ham United are about to show us what that would mean to them. Jagielka sends it out to Lee Bromby. He's been a real star for Sheffield United this season after crossing the city on Sheffield Wednesday. Harley now, it's come back to Paul Shaw, and he's been impeded by Fletcher. No, it's just not back to Paul Shaw, it's good feet to get it out of his feet and get it away. It's a little clip, not much, trying to put his foot away rather, Fletcher, but he, just a touch. It's a free kick in a dangerous position. Well, they've got Andy Little and Michael Tom sizing this one up. Little looking the favourite. Sheffield United have been bright and busy. And uh, to the Sheringham being man marked by the referee. It is left for Andy Little! 
saw off Aston Villa in the last round has got it in for West Ham now. Fantastic strike. The other, the other half of the goal was guarded by the wall, so he's gone for that far corner. Stephen Bywater, I don't know whether he quite saw it, but it's a super strike right through the bodies. Comes late, doesn't quite see it because he dives late, Stephen Bywater. But it's a great strike by Liddell, and quite honestly, although the game's only eight minutes old, it was coming. Sheringham on, big chance here, and that is a penalty, and could it be a red card here for Chris Morgan? Herman was in, it is, and Sheffield United are down to ten men. Well, it's a great touch, it's unfortunate for Chris Morgan, but he is last man, he bundles over Marlon Herwood, good touch by Sheringham, Herwood's in on goal, there's no doubt about it, is there in? That's a, a foul and a penalty, and unfortunately being last man, it's a red card as well. Sheffield United are the last lower division side to beat Arsenal. That was in Bruce Rioch's time in charge. But this is Arsene Wenger's 50th FA Cup tie, of which he has lost only five. One of them was on penalties. They've been semi-finalists or better in six of the last seven seasons. And it is Arsenal who will be kicking from left to right, attacking the clock end in the first 45 minutes. And this... Is a big afternoon for both Arsenal and Sheffield United at the beginning of what is a very big week for both. Sheffield United chasing the playoff positions in the Championship, Arsenal chasing FA Cup and Champions League success. The Premiership now is surely beyond them. It's Arsenal who get us underway, and there is Abue, the uh, Ivorian right back. Is Reyes skipped away from Jagielka? Free kick is given. Senderos is coming forward from the back here for Arsenal. Torre is also forward. Burkamp's delivery, it was uh, Matthew Flamini with the header, and it's a first touch for Paddy Kenny. This is Flamini. Great running by Abue to his right hand side. Flamini goes alone, there was a little touch on Flamini. This is Ljungberg and Burkamp! Oh! Bromby and Culliper there as well, so is Thirlwell and Gray. And the header was a free one, and it was from Lee Bromby. What a chance. What a chance. 
I mean, it's a complete mix-up with whoever's marking who there because Torre was marking, Bo Bo was marking. And just Lee Bromley struck between the middle of them. Free header, back across the goal, or down, anywhere down. It's a great chance. It's a collision between Burkamp and Cullip. Here's Flamini. In the end, the free kick has been given, and it's been given Arsenal's way. It was uh, almost a cumulative one, but now Cullip is getting involved. And there's uh, hands raised and arms thrown, and it's getting pretty ugly, and we have about 15 or 16 players involved here. The referee's two assistants have come across, but the card is red. Dennis Burkamp. Dennis Burkamp's been sent off. On the day he's taken the captain's armband, Dennis Bergkamp has shown the red card. Well, I think this is the original foul, I'm not too sure. No, it seems like the play goes on because they're trying to clear the ball. And then I think this is where um, Van Persen... Oh, it's Fabregas who gets tackled. That must be the foul. And this is Danny Cullip when he blasts the... Oh, it's, we just miss it. Well, it's See? a shove by Bergkamp. Yeah, it's two, two shoves. shoves by Bergkamp and a raised finger to the chin. And he's gone for that. Van Persie. Well, suddenly, with 41 minutes on the clock, it's Arsenal who are holding out to half time. It's eight years since Arsenal lost an FA Cup tie at Highbury. Lee Bromby will take the throw. And this will come a long way. I think Cullip got a flick on and it's gone in! Okay. Not going to count though. Well, Cullip certainly did get a flick on. This is Little. No one in the middle. Oh, Shifting out of the boy by that sending off of Dennis Burkham. He's, it's a great throw, Cullum, he's just challenging for the ball. Still Reyes. Oh, it's a clever ball, it's Flamini, great save, Pires on! 1-0 Arsenal, and it's Robert Pires! So unlucky Paddy Kenny. But it was intricate one-touch football around the penalty area that Arsenal are so, so good at. And Robert Pires puts the ten men in front. That's a good challenge, well done, Tom. Dispossessed Fabregas. Slip from Abue, this is Jonathan Forte. Shaw's in the middle. Gray's in the middle, Francis has got in the middle. Well done. Corner kick. Well, that's a chance what they want now. I'm surprised if Paddy Kenny doesn't come up for it as well. He's looking at the bench. He's looking at the manager. He's venturing. He's looking for permission, <laughs> Paddy Kenny. The Sheffield United goalkeeper. He's just on the edge of the centre circle there, but he'll stay there for the moment. In comes the cross. Seagon got something onto it. And again. And Cole oh. going to pay for handball, a penalty, it hits Senderos, it's a penalty kick to Sheffield United, handball by Senderos. 89 minutes on the clock. I think it's Cole up as well, who's involved in it, Steve. Amazing day he's had. Senderos, <laughs> can you believe it? It always happens, you throw everybody forward and get that ball in the box. They had two on the ball for the same short corner, Steve. And they never sent it, they never sent two players out there, Arsenal. They just went back in the box. They allowed them to take it short. It came in the box. They didn't deal with it, didn't clear it. It came to Danny Cullip, who just tried to help it back in. Sandros raised his arms, no question for me. Andy Gray scored in the penalty shootout against West Ham United to take Sheffield United to Highbury. Can he take Arsenal to Bramall Lane? Andy Gray, he can! It's one each!
it's back to Bramall Lane for a replay which you have to say Sheffield United deserve. Arsenal have played for a long, long time with just ten men. Dennis Bergkamp sent off. They thought Robert Perez had won the tie for them, but Andy Gray's penalty in the 90th minute of the game after the handball from Senderos means it's a replay at the beginning of March at Bramall Lane. It's finished Sheffield United 1, Arsenal 1. Struggling rather, and maybe the perfect opposition for Sheffield United after the Blades 3 0 loss at Plymouth in midweek. Rotherham did come back from 2 0 down to draw 2 2. And these sides met in December at Millmore. Here's Paul Shaw. Oh, and he scored against Rotherham for the second time this season. Shaw powering his way through, and that's a nice, tidy finish. Disappointing day at Plymouth and a draw against local rivals Rotherham left United down in eighth position in the championship. And stalwart keeper Paddy Kenny would be doubtful, having limped off at home park. Well, they were the Invincibles. Now they look indisciplined, injured and in trouble. Have Wenger's Arsenal ever been so vulnerable? From a who's who to just who? The manager has been forced to look to the very fringes of his squad for a team to face Sheffield United. Cup experts and the last lower division side to beat Arsenal and they still have an axe to grind after the defeat to the Gunners in the semi-final two years ago. It's a magnificent atmosphere and I'll tell you, Bramwell Lane full almost to the brim is no place for the faint-hearted. Sheffield United tonight are without Danny Cullip. He is suspended. And there are big question marks about the fitness of their goalkeeper, Paddy Kenny. He injured a hit playing at Plymouth, missed Saturday's win over Rotherham, been having treatment in an oxygen tent. Under the competition rules, Phil Barnes, who's the second-choice goalkeeper, is not eligible because he was on loan at Torquay when the first match was played. Arsenal include Patrick Vieira and Ashley Cole. Freddie Ljungberg will play just behind that 17-year-old Italian, Arturo Lupoli, scored twice this season against Everton in the League Cup. It's Almunia, not Lehman, and Clichy for Pires. And this is the biggest crowd at Bramall Lane by a distance this season. Phil Dowd is the referee. And it's Arsenal underway. Here's Geary. Pascal Sigon and Almunia. Went straight to Thurwell. Morgan to Kenny. Sigon. Geary forward, no offside flag here. Great chance for Sheffield United over the top of the crossbar. Michael Tong. What an opportunity in the first minute of the game. Incredible. I thought he was offside, Steve, but the, the assistant's right by it. He does ever so well. He looks up, just picks out Tong. He just strides onto it. I, I just thought he was going to go into the back of the net. And still Vieira. Got away from Thurwell, Ashley Cole arriving. Cole! Paddy Kenny's lost it and he's got it again. Closest Arsenal have come. It was. Good individual play from Vieira. Here you go. Whipped it one side, runs round the other. Now it all opens up for him. Three against the four in the box. Does ever so well. It's a good, good ball. Everyone's trying to go for the near post. Kenny does ever so well at the second attempt. More than two hours of football between the two, and still there's nothing to choose between the two. 
Jackie Elka with the throw. Little flick on came from Vieira. Flamini with the clearance. Bromby to Jackie Elka. Clichy's header. First touch for Awusu Abey. Here's Little. Montgomery, he squeezed across in, went a very long way, and Almunia saves. John Harley got the final touch, but any one of three might have got a shot in. Well, both at the start of the game, the same thing's happened at the start of the second half. Here he is, nobody deals with it again. Comes on John Harley's right foot, and all he does is stab it down into the ground. Tom. Oh, here's a Wusu Abey. He's on his own. And Kenny was just about able to stretch far enough. Clichy. Fabregas. Awusu Abe. Vieira. Lovely ball. Fabregas. Yeah! Oh, and over the bar. What a clearance that is by Geary. Oh, I did ever so well. Super ball from Patrick Vieira. It just dissects the defence. And I just think he just, he just coming into the shot there. I think it's Freddie Lundberg who gets clipped. I'm not sure who it's by, but he looks like he was going to come on to it. Premiership team are well on top. It's Patrick Vieira. Hacked away. Fabregas. Oh! <laughs> Nearly snapped the crossbar. Here he comes, Peter Walton. Three. Little. And Geary's in behind. Tong is in the middle. It's gone deeper. It's Harley! Oh! Save. It's a corner. There's a, everybody's got their hands on their faces there. They can't believe it. It's a fantastic ball from Geary. Absolutely fantastic. I thought there's a shade of offside in it. He does have as well just to reach it, but quality, great header, slightly, slightly at the keeper, anywhere down, I think he beats him. It's extra time at Bramwell Lane. Sheffield United nil. Arsenal nil. It's Torre. Oh, and it's only in the air. Oh, great save by Kenny. Torre. Less than two minutes. I don't think there'll be any coming back from this if it goes in. It's Cole. Kenny saves. It's penalties. Phil Dow blows his whistle. And we're going to go to a penalty shootout. Andy Gray, Sheffield United's top scorer against Almunia. And scores. 1-0, Sheffield United. What a relief. What a relief for the crowd, for himself, his teammates. Get the team off to a good, solid start. It was a fantastic penalty. Out to the reach of the goalie. And positive. It's Laren for Arsenal against Paddy Kenny. Laren has won an Olympic final and an African Nations Cup final in penalty shootouts. He scored in both. He scored a penalty at White Hart Lane earlier this season in Arsenal's win. Now he faces Paddy Kenny, Sheffield United's half-fit goalkeeper. It's Lauren. It's 1-1. Jackie Elka saved by Almunia. Advantage Arsenal. Oh, I think he's making him take it again, Steve. He is. Wow. There was a nod of the head from Almunia there as if to say he doesn't believe it, but the referee and the assistant are both standing on the, on, the, on the byline, and they can see if they're moving off it or not. 
Oh, what pressure now. Does he go the same way? He does, and he scores. Well, that's brought the smiles to the faces. Usually assistant referee stands on the byline and the referee takes up a central position, the penalty area. But on this occasion, they're both standing on that byline to see if the keeper moves off. Because what they're saying is they're allowed to move, move along the line, but they're not allowed to move off the line towards the ball. And that must have been very close. He's <laughs> very relieved, I know that, Phil Jagielka. I mean, th both sides have played really well and nobody deserved to lose. But the, Alan Shearer said, the fact of it is, someone's going to have a miserable night. It's a long, slow walk forward from Patrick Vieira. And a long run up for the penalty. Vieira scores. Two each. Well, they've both gone in that corner. Oh, the referee's making oh. him take it again, is it? No, he shouted over to Almunia. At, uh, Almunia to encourage his goalkeeper. Vieira, the captain, has done his job. You know, you look at Almunia, people say, you know, he's good at reactions, shot stopping, and he's a big frame. I think this is Quinn, is it? It's Quinn. Alan Quinn. Oh, oh and safe by Almunia. And this time it won't be taken again. It is advantage Arsenal. To said, he's a big guy, lots of agility. He's bobbed on the line. He's guessed right. It's not far enough in the corner. And he gets a good hand on it. Freddy Ljungberg to take for Arsenal. It's two each, but Sheffield United have taken three. It goes without saying, it's just a key kick now. Gives you a little bit of breathing space if you miss one. And both previous penalties have gone the same side to the keeper's right. Paddy Kenny save from Sheringham and Harewood in that shootout against West Ham. He doesn't save from Ljungberg. Yeah, good penalty. I just wonder if the message got through, I think. Paddy Kenny, I think it's the right-hand side is injured when I saw him stretching it before. John Harley for Sheffield United. Has a cup winner's medal from his time with Chelsea Harley. Oh, he needs to score now. Left-footed, oh. save! Way to our left, they're just cheering away there. The Arsenal travelling supporters. And this here, really, he just goes for a bit of power and straight down the middle. Sometimes, you, you tr instead of going for one of the corners, you're just slightly nervous about missing the target altogether. You just go for a little bit more power and hit it straight. I think there's a theory that if, you sta if the keeper stands still for at least two, Chances are, towards the end of the, the, the five sequence as well, someone will drive it straight at him. If Ashley Cole scores this penalty, Arsenal will go to Bolton in the FA Cup quarter-final. <laughs> Ashley Cole. Arsenal are through. What a struggle it has been for Arsene Wenger's side. But Arsenal are through in the shootout. They scored four out of four. And that is enough in the end to beat Sheffield United. But it obviously has an effect on us. We, we, I think we had four or five great FA Cups uh, games. And in that period, we lost four on the trot in the league. So obviously mine, the mind wasn't on it and uh, you know that's why we have to look at the Cups this year. You know, I, I think that we've given a lot of people around the country, not just in Sheffield, a lot of enjoyment in the Cups over the last few years. But I think we really have to concentrate this year on, on the league and uh, if the Cup has to take a, a second, you know, sort of a second choice, if you like, almost, then that has to be the case this year. We can't take our mind off what we really want to do this year, I believe. Cabot making his first start for 21 months and he celebrates his return with a goal. 14 minutes played.
Queen. Cross and turned in by Andy Gray, 2 0. Cabot Little falling for Cabot, magnificent. The setup from Andy Little, there it is, and it falls wonderfully for Steve Cabot. This is the perfect response from Sheffield United to their defeat at Cardiff on Saturday. Little ball in. Canamartri off the post. Really good chance for another goal. Ah, the ball in play. Saved by Williams. Great! 4 0. And Andy Gray, just like Steve Cabot, has scored twice. Three successive away defeats for Sheffield United after the 2 0 loss at Stoke at the weekend. Here to Bromby. Lee Bromby puts Sheffield United in front. Harley to take. Against the wall. Harley again. The deflection took it onto the roof of the bar. Cresswell. Fantastic from Richard Cresswell early in the second half. What a good overhead kick. Croslet. Goalkeeper couldn't get there and Quinn has turned it in. 28 minutes played. Little. That's a nice ball forward and the flag has stayed down on that far side as well. It's Andy Gray and it's 2-0. Really good forward ball from Little. And Gray took full advantage. took 120 minutes of play and penalties for Arsenal to end the Blades FA Cup run. Kenny battled on despite his injury, but in the end, the shootout was a foregone conclusion. With just the championship to concentrate on, the Red and White Wizards rallied to reach a playoff spot as we enter into a busy April. Ball forward. Pretty fast tempo to this match. Here's Danny Weber. Weber. Oh, he scored on his full debut. Danny Weber, the man who's joined the Blades on loan from Watford. And Sheffield United lead this Yorkshire derby by a goal to nil.
Rebel with a little touch off. This is Quinn. He's got past the defender. Might fall to Montgomery. It gets better and better for Sheffield United. Cos look to take the free kick. Cos look wants it back again. Hasn't got it though. Header from Jagielka. Oh, what a good goal! from Bray. Sheffield United surely on their way to recording their first win at Ellen Road for almost 19 years. Sheffield United on their way to completing a double over Leeds. Butler. Boys collided with Sullivan, and this is Gray. Sullivan makes the stop. Gray again. 4 0. That's what it means. Sheffield United supporters delirious. Danny Webber marked his home debut with a well taken double. But two deflected goals look to have earned QPR a point. But referee Lee Probert spotted a foul by George Santos in the last minute. The leading scorer Gray gave United a lifeline, coolly converting United's first championship penalty of the season. Geary. Montgomery might fall here to Alan Quinn. 1 1. Sheffield United's hopes of reaching the playoffs are extremely slim after two draws and a defeat in their last three. They have to beat Millwall, really. But Millwall have made a bright start to this match. Wise with the ball full. This is Jody Morris. Oh, it's 1 0. Just five minutes played. Now Sheffield United have it all to do. They really have to win this game, the Blades, and then hope that other results go their way as well. Jackie Elka with the header. Supporters desperate for full time. Little. And that is the last kick of the match. A lap of honour for the Sheffield United players. The season is going to end in disappointment. No playoff place for the Blades this year. again, Lescott Julian Lescott scored at Bramall Lane and he scored again Sheffield United playing in their all new away strip of all white Jackie Elka Alan Quinn he simply doesn't score ordinary goals United behind for only two minutes Jagielka with the pass. And Quinn really hits this one. He's looking to restore their lead. Michael here to Clark, and they've done exactly that. 
2-1 to the home side. Good block. Sheffield United racing forward. It's towards Gray. It's 2-2. Nice ball through. Good finish as well. On the Sheffield, number eight, Andy Gray. So the 2004-2005 season ended with a 4-2 defeat at Wolves. Still, for Sheffield United's players, there is a rousing reception from the travelling fans. And the Blades would finish the championship campaign in eighth place, six points behind West Ham, who were in the last playoff position. Well, I'm, I'm, as to say I'm disappointed at the end of the season, I think that's the answer really. I believe that we should have been in the playoffs, uh, nothing else less than that, and, uh, and that's what disappoints me, you know, and uh, that won't go away, and the sooner the season comes round, the better now, because I think we have a better chance now. I know they say it's going to be more difficult with, with Palace spending a lot of money, Norwich spending a lot of money, you know, uh, Southampton will be desperate to get back. But I think we are a better side, you know, with the new players coming in, the quality that we're bringing in, and, and I think there'll be one or two more before the season starts. I think we're in a better position. But I think Leeds away was the you know the best performance. You know, in a, a, a good crowd, thirty thousand there, and a good night for football. We couldn't. We only took allowed to take about I don't, whatever it was, seventeen hundred at the most. Um, and some of the football we played that night was quite outstanding. Uh, the goal, Danny Weber's first goal, which gave the our fans a look at him. Um, and the overall contribution, Andy Gray enjoyed his two, Montgomery enjoyed his goal against his home club. Uh, but some of the football was excellent and, and, uh, and that was a stage I thought we should have gone on from there and, and, and gone and grasped the playoff position, which was up for grabs. Everybody was losing week after week and, and we couldn't do that, which, which is frustrating. I, th I think that um, showed me that we need a little bit more in certain areas on the field of play. We can't do it all off the field on the bench. So, you know, we're trying to bring a certain type of player into the club in, in certain areas now to give us that little bit more steel mentally as well as physically.